So I've been asked this for a while now, and that is how to add a power LED to a Game Boy Pocket that doesn't have a power LED. Now there's two ways we can do this. The original one has a power LED that barely fades when the batteries are almost dead. So it goes from a red to a slightly less red, which isn't that great or that useful. It's not very indicative of low battery. And then we've got another way, which is to simply have a power LED for now, which lights up. So the problem a lot of you guys get is you'll get a Game Boy Pocket like this, for example. You'll fit it in a shell. You'll put your lens on. And then you'll realize there's a hole in the lens and there's actually no LED on this board. So there's just a hole to ground. So we're going to do a basic install of an LED that you guys can do now with what you probably have lying around, which is just a 3mm LED and a basic resistor. In this case, 20K gives a good level of brightness. Let's take a look at the schematic. And if you jump to retro6.wiki and then click the public files, you'll then be taken to a Google Drive with all the schematics. Uh, you can go down to Game Boy Pocket and then you can open up the schematic here. Go to page five and we can see the power LED circuit here. So let me just explain how this works on the ones that do have it. So we take a quick look at the circuit here. VCC is here, which is effectively the battery voltage. So VCC is the battery voltage. VDD is the regulated five volt power. This is just a BJT transistor. And when power is applied here, the five volts power, it allows current to flow through here and light up the LED. Naturally, as that unregulated power from VCC, the battery, lowers, so will the voltage and so will the brightness of the LED. They use a diode just to drop the excess voltage so the resistor isn't higher. But as mentioned, this circuit's kind of pointless to us because if we're going to implement a transistor-based LED system, we might as well make it where it flicks between two different LEDs. So green for good power, red for low power, for example. So we can do that next time. But for now, all we want to do is light up an LED when the power's on. And the obvious way to do that is from the regulator. So the regulator doesn't receive the power uh, into the system until it goes through the switch and becomes VCC. So this VDD won't be present until we turn the console on. And that's the rail we're just going to attach our LED power to. So if we just take a look at the board here, and obviously as we position it in, we can see there is clearly the LED position. If we grab our multimeter, and you can see this gold ring around the button. Let's just double check. This is clearly ground here. So we'll go on ground here. And as suspected, we have effectively a ground ring here. Flipped over, it's also ground here. So we have one pin of the LED, and we can slide the LED through this hole so it aligns correctly. And what we need to find as well is the regulated power. So that will be the output of this power regulator, the VDD, which is five volts. So if we flip that around, that is this pin here. So if I just put my meter on this pin here, and all you do to find it is simply go up here and just start probing around for places that give a continual beep and find the closest pad where we can pick up power from. Ah, that's lucky. So the bottom of this cap in this place is power. If your board version differs, just use the same technique. Just basically put your multimeter into continuity mode, probe this pin, and look for uh, continuity as close of a region as you can get. So with that known now, we have VDD, which is switched power, and we have ground. And we're going to bypass all of this kind of circuit and just do a literal... LED with the ground to ground and the positive of the LED through the resistor to VDD. So it couldn't be any simpler. Grab your LED. Uh, short leg is ground. And it, we want to place it through this hole and see if we can fit both legs through. No. So if we push both legs through, you can see they're both going to touch this ground pad. So I'll have to just put the ground leg through itself like this. And with that leg through, we can just let this other leg rest on the outside of the board here, making contact with nothing else. So we'll just slide this through and push it slightly so that it sits, when it's resting in the hole, central over the hole, like that. 
So when we invest it in, we'd want it either slightly up like this, or you could potentially put some Kapton tape over the top surface, but I prefer to keep it floating above. So we'll have it just slightly above like that. So let's flip this over and let's just quickly flow some solder onto that pad so that the LED is held in place. And you can see that's all we need there. So the LED is now held in place and we can position it as mentioned and we'd want it to be the other side. So we'd want to move this LED over to this wall, not this wall. So I can probably do this by just holding, warming up and moving it around while you kind of have the solder warm. Now it's in position, let's just check we aren't making a joint there, which we're not. So you can see that positive leg isn't making contact with the negative, so we're good. Otherwise you'll just burn the LED out. And now we have the ground soldered. We can just bend this leg around, come this side. Let's just clean off the excess ground lead. We don't need that. And all that's left to do now is we need a resistor between here and the positive. So we basically need a resistor attaching to this leg and then soldering to this pad here. So because it's easier for most of you to use radials, which are these resistors, I'll use one of these. But if I was doing this myself, I'd probably use an 0603 LED connected to here going across and then just a wire to uh, this leg. But for now, as I mentioned, this will be easier for you guys to do with radials if you're not used to small soldering. We'll put a little bit of flux on here just to make the solder flow good. And then with that, just pre-tin the bottom of the capacitor. Place the resistor in position. Just remember this is a screw hole, so you don't want to go over that screw hole. I think bend that into a sort of position here so it's way out the way. So just tack that in place like that. And once it's on, try not to pull too much because you'll pull the capacitor off. Uh, here you want to make sure, I know it isn't touching, but just visually, for better visual, you can do that so you can see it doesn't touch. And the final step is now to join this leg to this leg. So for that, we can just hold on to the resistor, bend the leg around, and solder it over the top like that. And again, you'll see from the side, we're not making contact with... Uh, each leg of the resistor. They are physically separated by obviously height. So we're not shorting anything out there. And we'll just tack those two legs together. So before trimming everything off, let's just make sure this functions. Just grab three volt power, presuming this console works. Pretty sure it does. You can see now when we turn on the console, we have a red light. that's all working as a power light and let's just check this fits in the shell because this is literally the first time I've done this so we'll soon find out sits over there no problem sits in the shell no problem and the back has this metal cage so we want to make sure when we close this that we're not shorting on the metal cage so you want to make sure definitely that this leg is twisted this way so when the metal cage touches it touches on the resistor and we will bend this out of the way, sort of like that, so that we are not touching these two legs under here, the floating in midair. This is not going to touch anything, so we're happy to snip that. And let's take a look now where the clear back. You can see in the hole here that the metal here isn't touching anything. And that the metal cage, as expected, the resistor will rest against the metal cage, but the wires here don't make contact with anything. Close is perfectly fine as well, it's not impacting anything. And you can see the resistor just sits inside of there. So if positioned correctly, this is like a nice little compact place to install the LED. If you wanted to move it further away, you can kind of see here is a very blank spot. So if you didn't want to be that precise, you could always just move this resistor to right below the switch here, which is probably an easier way to solder. So you could place the resistor right here and then just bend the legs into position where they're not touching to solder to the LED positive here and the power pin here, or just 
beep around with your multimeter for a place you'd prefer. But if you position it just right, this is like a nice little spot it does fit in easily. You could just leave this leg to bend around and move the resistor further up, and then this leg reaches further over here. So the same install, but positioning this resistor where you feel comfortable. But as shown, if done right, then you can have it in the shell, making no bad contact, and the power light comes on. So there's no issue with obviously a short there, as long as you take your time and look at where things connect. So that's it for this one, a nice easy install video on how to get an LED in there. If you're interested in potentially a dual LED setup, maybe doing 20603 resistors, a green and a red, and the red comes on when it's low battery, the green comes on when it's fully charged or above 20% say, uh, then let me know and I'll happily do another video. And let me know if you have any thoughts or improvements on potentially positioning or an easier install.